Samsung's new flagship, the Galaxy S6, has been well received by most consumers and critics alike, while some have not appreciated the changes brought into the phone. Hi, my name is Abhishta, and in this first video of Gadget Venture, I'll be sharing my opinions on this flagship Android device. Samsung has really upped its game in terms of build quality and design. There's absolutely no doubt that this is the best looking and best feeling Samsung device to date with Gorilla Glass 4 front and back and a metal band running around the side. One handed operation is extremely easy on the phone and it grips nicely into my hands. This slim device looks very elegant, especially in this blue topaz variant. There are some drawbacks though. The phone tends to get smudged easily. The darker the color of your device, the more visible the smudges. The protruding camera module will also be a big annoyance to people who use their phones caseless, as it will get chipped over time and as a whole it kinda spoils the look of the design. It wasn't a big hit for me though as I used a case with the phone. Durability will also be a concern for many users, well, because even if it's Gorilla Glass, it's still glass and it will break on impact. But again, a case will solve that worry. If you want a tough phone, better wait for the S6 Active. Samsung's handsets, especially the Note series and the S series have always had beautiful displays and the S6 is no exception. It is the same Quad HD Super AMOLED technology seen on the Galaxy Note 4 but with a smaller 5.1 inch display. This equates to a pixel density of 577 ppi making it one of the sharpest displays you can get on the market right now. Colors on the phone look bright and brilliant and outdoor visibility is also very good. My only concern would be the higher resolution screen uh, draining the battery but more on the battery life later. The S6 packs a very powerful Exynos 7420 chipset paired with a Mali T760 MPA GPU and 3 gigs of RAM. The phone as you might expect is fast, very fast. It can handle games without an issue and multitasking is also a breeze. Switching between applications is also very smooth. I didn't notice the phone getting quite warm after 30 to 40 minutes of gameplay but it wasn't too hot and uncomfortable to hold. And also according to the smart manager app in the phone, there's always about 60 to 75 percent of RAM being used even after the previous applications are closed. This improper memory management might just be a software issue, so an upgrade will probably be on its way. But even with the high usage of RAM, there's absolutely no slowdown. The S6 sports a 16 megapixel rear camera with an aperture size of f1.9 and comes with optical image stabilization. It's capable of shooting UHD, Quad HD, and Full HD at 60 frames per second, though HDR video effects, video stabilization, picture taking while recording, and tracking autofocus won't work in these three video sizes. The front camera is a 5 megapixel shooter capable of capturing Quad HD videos. The interface is easy to use, looks cleaner, and more appealing than the camera interfaces from previous Samsungs. There are also different camera modes to choose from and more can be downloaded. The front and back camera perform brilliantly in low light conditions and normal conditions. Video and photo samples will be posted on the blog very soon. The device is currently running Android 5.0.2 with the TouchWiz skin on top of it. The skin which was once notorious for being one of the most bloated Android UIs in the market has now considerably lightened. Most of the bloat and many of the unnecessary features have been removed from the phone. With Lollipop running on the phone, the icons and notification bar have a flat look to them. The various apps opened are represented in the form of cards. I might be one of the only few people who likes the coordination touch bright look of TouchWiz. If the look doesn't suit you, you've got a wide array of themes in the integrated theme store. The S6 still comes preloaded with Samsung native apps, namely the browser, S Health, Smart Manager, S Planner and Galaxy apps. The phone returns with a heart rate monitor and a much improved fingerprint sensor. The fingerprint sensor is similar to the one found on the iPhone 6 and iPhone 6 Plus. It works well and is a good alternative for passwords and patterns. As I've mentioned, I didn't find S Health particularly useful, so I didn't use the heart rate monitor. The S6 comes with a downsized 2550mAh battery, 
compared to the 2800 on the S5. With the Quad HD screen and the powerful processor, I wasn't expecting this phone to have a good battery life and it lasted a day of checking emails, watching videos and playing games. Power users will be disheartened to know that the S6 doesn't even come with removable battery. The fact that the phone has fast charging and wireless charging is convenient. I couldn't try the wireless charging capabilities as I didn't have a wireless charging pad. Fast charging is useful and uh, as it charges my phone from 5% to 100% in about 1 hour and 20 minutes. Though the phone tends to get a bit warm after an hour of charging. The S6 is no doubt the best phone Samsung has launched to date and also one of the best phones out there. It is a big step forward in design and performance and has proved that Samsung is capable of making phones with build quality that can rival HTC and Apple. Having a non-removable bag and no microSD card slot does not bother me, though I would have preferred a slightly thicker phone with a large battery and more pronounced camera module.